riempirò la pistella. Like school, 
in the community, she was a leader, very humble, and down to earth, a mentor, and a community activist. Very to the forefront of the Fancy Village Committee, and especially in successful execution of the Fancy National Women's Day event last year. She co hosted the event that was also part of the Fancy Curry Food Work, which also sang the national anthem of SVG in Curry Food. Another area where I personally appreciate Felicia and was personal to me is when she assisted in organizing and planning with us the grieving parents of the Rock of the Church. She would always say, it's all the thing, Anna, it's up to her, but she would honestly give her suggestion and listen to ours. She was a very good communicator and team player. There were times too because her sister Bethany, who lost her daughter, and he was based overseas, and she would direct us to Felicia to act on her behalf. Although I grew up with Felicia, it was only when she eulogized at her sister's funeral last year that I knew how she got her nickname Lynn. She said, Lynn, who was just learning to speak, was saying something to her. And in our colloquial, we were used to refer to a female child as girl. But every time we would say, well, and she would say it so sweetly that it stuck. When she carried herself, she was very special and her genuine love magnetized to those around her. She was an exemplary lady and had an unique style. She exudes happiness, confidence, beauty, joy, radiance, and professionalism. She was just a she. Felicia, an overcomer, a mother, a sister, an aunt, a friend, a confidant, a woman, and a human. It would be remiss of me not to mention my cousin, Dunks, who is also known as Victoria Valentine. Felicia may be a friend to everyone. For this reason, Victoria Dunks Valentine took it upon herself to be Felicia's caretaker. The state was short, Lynn. Dunks was at Felicia's bed and called night and day, always with her during those sleepless nights, during the pains and the tears. And for that, they developed a greater, stronger, and better friendship and relationship. Thank you, Dunks for your selflessness, commitment, dedication, and the love that you have shown towards Felicia to the end. For my family, and on behalf of the Rapporteur, deceased, we extend our deepest condolences to her children, Alexia and Abigail, her brother and sisters, and other relatives of friends. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you.
this tribute is entitled Legacy of Love, Legacy of Love the Tribute to Felicia Alexander. In solemn halls where whispers burn, we gather here our hearts for love. For Felicia Alexander, she was more than a guide than wisdom calls. She was our mother in every way. Her love embraces our speech. A beacon bright in darkness night, guiding us to praise and love. A motivator fierce and true in every task she saw and she felt. Her word in her heart's sweet, our bed, the source and she said, she called us words. In culture room, she did in part the richness of our heritage, heart to heart, teaching us language, tradition, and love, opening walls we never knew before. A doctor training also, tending to also, with care and kindness, making us whole. Her healing touch, a tender grace in every smile we saw her face. A friend so there in times of need, her presence like a gentle breeze. True laughter, tears, and joy unto it, for friendship was a gift more precious than gold.
because we have nothing to eat. And she, and she tell my mother to go and get us. She will give my mother the money to go and get us breakfast to eat. That is the end of my speech. <laughs> I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. 
whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. The earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. The waters therefore roar and be troubled. The mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall believe. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. To God we ascribe all glory and honor and praise. Honorable Montgomery Daniel, Honorable Curtis King, Honorable Chevron John, Ministers of the Gospel, here Reverend Harold Allen, Reverend Neva, Brother Oswald Robinson, President of the Teachers Union, representatives from the Ministry of Education, family and friends. If for some reason I miss someone, my apologies, but a blessed morning or afternoon rather to you. Thought I would have gotten a response there. They say when you say good morning, you respond, right? All right, praise God. And the teachers who are here, you know when you go in the class and you say good morning, you expect to hear good morning. We, we thank you for being here today at this homegoing service of our dear sister, Felicia Alexander. And we express condolences to the family, daughters, sisters, close relatives, and friends alike. At this time, I will invite Miss Brother Norman Michael to come, and he will be leading in prayer. Okay, thank you. Let's all bow our heads as we to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we honor you this moment as judge of all the earth. We trust your love and express as expressed through Jesus Christ. We believe your promise of redemption by grace through faith alone. And we believe your promise of deliverance from that of great tribulation that is to come upon the earth and those who reject you. May our reassuring presence be with us always, and may our lives reflect the moral values and beauty of Christ our Lord. Father in heaven, each of us have hearts. You have created a vacuum and an inner structure. Though we try to fill that void with many things, we fail miserably. and end up all together lonely, frustrated, tormented, by guilt, and unable to find our way out of darkness into your marvelous light. I thank you for bringing us all here safely to show our last respect to our loved one. And as we celebrate her life, we thank you for the contributions that she would have made in our community. You have given us, you have given her two girls, two daughters. I just pray their God that wherever they are this time will comfort their hearts. You have made her a teacher. You have taught many of our young boys and girls in this community and other communities where she would have worked. At this time, I just want to pray for each and every one again who are gathered here. Pray to God for the one who is going to bring the word. Pray that you have your will. And let your will be done in all our lives. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Um, like I said before, the Mr. Duncan was supposed to be here leading the worship session. So, seeing that he's now around, 
I'm going to take it on. So we have this chorus or this song. Thanks, thanks. We gave you thanks. After that, we'll have the first scripture reading. Thanks, thanks, the chorus. I give the thanks. All right, let's see. Thanks, thanks. to the earth 
that he may judge his people. Gather his seeds together unto him. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens shall repair his righteousness. For God is judge himself, sin. Hear it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Joseph. Okay, let us go with this chorus. I will praise you all my life. We stand as we sing this one. I will praise you all.
I can do many things because she taught it necessary to prepare us for the world. I want to share a fond memory with you. When we were younger, mommy got us a puppy and we named him Lucky. For some time, Lucky slept in our beds. We dressed him up in mommy's big shorts. I think there's a photo of him on mommy's bed on Facebook somewhere. We loved Lucky and mommy really indulged us in a lot regarding him. We lost Lucky while I was away during my undergrad degree. Mommy called to tell me and she knew I would be heartbroken, so she was hesitant to tell me initially. She was right, I was heartbroken. Now, I have a dog of my own that I dress up and I sleep in my bed. It's funny how life came full circle in this regard. I want to hold on to memories like that. Memory, memories that turn into my lived reality as an adult. Abby and I found a note in Mommy's journal for us, and I want to share part of it with you. And I quote, My children, you guys are awesome. Alex, you handled it beautifully. Abby, you amazed me. You did so well too, and I, when I thought you couldn't, you were my constant cheerleaders. End quote. I want to remember my mother's words about us, and I ask that you remember her fondly as well. Thank you. that is the person in charge of that grade. As we gather here today to honor the life and legacy of our dear colleague, our hearts are heavy. Her sudden passing, passing has left a void in our school community, a void that can never be filled. As we reflect on her remarkable journey, we also celebrate the impact and special touch she had on our lives. Miss Alexander was more than a teacher. She was a beacon of inspiration and an advocate for education and a compassionate mentor. Her dedication and commitment to the education of her children had no boundaries. She was relentless, relentless and unwavering in her pursuit of excellence for the students. In fact, in many respects, her commitment to our students was unparalleled. Let us remember her through the lens of her remarkable qualities. Those who know Miss Alexander know she, was a, she had a passion for teaching. She approached her role with boundaries, with, sorry, with boundless enthusiasm. Whether she was teaching language arts, mathematics, or leading an extracurricular activity, her, pressure, her passion was contagious. She believed that education was not just about imparting knowledge, but also nurturing young minds and hearts and preparing students for the future. She was a champion of extracurricular activities. Our school's vibrant extracurricular activities owes much to her, from organizing fundraising, World Food Day and Heroes Day activities, independence and Garifuna celebrations and conducting students and teachers choirs. Miss Alexander was present. She breathed life into every event held at our school. Her tireless 
efforts behind the scenes made our students and teachers, made our students and teachers this experience richer and more fulfilling. Miss Alexander had a special gift. She was a champion in choral speech writing. That is, the ability to weave words into powerful choral speeches. Her eloquence resonated in every performance, leaving audiences spellbound. Whether it was a school assembly, a graduation ceremony, or a community event, her words had the power to move hearts and leave lasting memories. Who can forget her masterpiece, which was written at very short notice to mark the visit of the governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Dr. Timothy N.J. Antoine, to the CW Prescott Primary School. The words and performance of the piece, entitled My Back, Your Back, The People's Back, had everyone present spellbound. Governor Antoine was so moved by the choral speech that he invited the students and teachers to the opening ceremony to mark the change in chairmanship of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank Monetary Council. An invitation was also extended to the bank's 40th anniversary celebration. This only goes to show the quality of work produced by our dear sister. Earlier in the open tribute, I heard Mr. Valentine talking about Felicia wanting to come back to Fancy. Once you hit CW Prescott, we would not let my horse like that. <laughs> so Felicia had already changed her mind. Her mind. All she just wanted to do is to be transported from Fancy to CW Prescott Primary School. <laughs> Beyond the classroom, Miss Alexander was a friend, a confidant, and a source of comfort. She listened without judgment, offered encouragement, and reminded us that kindness mattered. Her empathy, empathy touched countless lives, including those of her very close friends. Many of them recalled the times when she showered them with goodies from her many journeys to fancy. She would say to them, me bring goodies, yeah, yeah. me bring me goodies and them, you know. I share them up, make sure everybody gets something. Additional, additionally, whenever a conflict arose among the group she was involved in, Miss Alexander would sit to them in her unique style of talking. I am about with that. I am about with that man. She what upon that. As we mourn her lost, let us celebrate the legacy she leaves behind. Miss Alexander instilled in us a love for learning, a sense of purpose, and the courage to dream big. She challenged us to enjoy life, to embrace diversity, and to be loving and compassionate. As she would often say, Girl, life short enough. I am not say about your death. I'll be enjoy yourself now. Miss Alexander did just that in the very short time she spent with us. The final bell was rung, rung for Miss Alexander on March 7th. But her influence will resonate in our lives forever. Her memory will forever be a source of inspiration and guidance for all who knew her. In the quiet moments, when we hear the echo of her laughter or recall encouraging words, we will know that she lives on within us. Let us honor her memory by continuing her work, the work of shaping minds, fostering curiosity and spreading kindness. To her family, we extend our deepest condolences. May you find solace in knowing that Felicia touched so many lives and made lasting impact. We stand together, united in grief, but also in gratitude for having shared this journey with her. Rest in peace, our dear friend and colleague. Your light will forever illuminate our school, and your spirit will guide us as we carry your torch forward. At this time, the staff will now pay tribute in song, and this song sums up the message that 
Felicia wants to live with us from the time she was ailing and spoke with her the mother and to, up to the time of her death this song just dropped in my spirit and I said to my staff that I think that this is the song or this is the song that Felicia wants to live with us. She has run her race and now she has finished her task.
Mrs. King, principal of the CW Presta Primary. Abigail? So I have here in my hand a book of condolences. So I'm going to present it to you on behalf of the entire family, CW Prescott Primary School's family. We have lost a gem. I could not contain myself. Felisa was an asset to our school. Um, it's just going to be a struggle without her. So, anyway. I don't know if you observe anything while you're all here. You probably have about um, a dozen of them, right? Close to that, or more. How much is men? One. How much is the men? One. One. One man. Two men? Sorry? Still, you man. One. Alright? Okay, somewhere around, somewhere about this hour, I'm going to bend it a bit. We have with us um, the honorable members here, two members of the government, honorable Daniel, Mr. King, we have honorable Trevor and John, and we have with us the president of the teachers' union. So somewhere around uh, between time, we're going to ask, I'm going to give you a little bit of time, maybe three minutes the most, to, all right? But before that, it's on the program. All right, whatever, we're going on. Okay? See, now we press the school, now we have Wesleyan Holiness Assembly. This commitment to adopt protocol that has already been established and to say a blessed good afternoon to everyone. My name is Neva Cardis, Reverend Neva Cardis, and I am the pastor of the church, Kingston West Holiness Church, where Felicia worshipped. Felicia joined our church as a member just over two years ago when she took water baptism. <clears throat> Previous to that, she came religiously when she was in Kingston with her daughters, Abigail and Alexia, very much younger. Remember Alexia still going to high school, Abigail going to Bishop College. They were very much participants in our Sunday school and youth department. And she would come to church whenever she was staying down on the weekend. And she came with Kamali, her very good friend. I couldn't get her to come here this morning, so I'm doing two full. And uh, she was a live wire. Even though she wasn't yet a full member of the church, she would participate in everything that we had. And uh, I spoke to her several times about giving her heart to Christ because I saw that the hand of God was upon her life. And she finally made that decision. She took what the baptism just over two years ago. She was one of our worship leaders. If you go to the Kingston Church Facebook page, you would see different occasions where she was leading the worship. 
I loved all of my members, but if for some reason I didn't see Felicia on a Sunday morning, sometimes my spirit dropped. Because she gave you that boost. She was such a person. She was a live wife. She was a friendly, loving, caring person. And she would participate in all of our sales. Even though she couldn't come, she would send. If we're having a fundraiser, she would send whatever she can. When she first fell ill, she told us we stood with her. I can't remember the time we gathered and she was not the subject of our prayer. And we believe in our hearts that God would change things, which he did. Last December, there about when she fell in again, we trusted God. I remember saying to the church at some point that we don't always get the healing that we look forward to because when we say healing, people expect you to come back alive, full well, and back in things. But we, as Christians, know that sometimes God takes us out of our pain and suffering. So we prepared when she was about to travel and we shared with her. And her last voice note stood still ringing in my head when she said that everything was falling down. And she mentioned what was happening and what the doctors would have said to her. As much as I believe God and I trust in God, I wouldn't like to do that. I felt a little disappointed because I believed somehow in my heart that she was coming back to us to sing and she would say, I'm not there, but I, when I come back, come back, I, you know, because we were having a little challenge in terms of where we were doing our worship and she was ready to come back to be a part. And for us, we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we don't mourn as some do because we know that our believe in our hearts that our sister will be reigning with our Savior. But we felt as a church a little down because during those last moments, we didn't get the opportunity to spend them with her. Although we were praying for her, we were trying to reach out to her, but you know when you're down, it's difficult to communicate, and so she couldn't communicate with us. But every day I would send some message, and we're trying to reassure her, and I know Sister Carly would call, and there was this point where we just couldn't make contact. And it really broke, broke me. When we got the message of our passing, I struggled that night. But I thank God for the life she lived. Because from the moment she rededicated her life to Christ, nothing held her back. She gave it her all. And I remember her saying that in that um, voice note that despite things were falling apart, I'm still praying. And that gives hope. Because she knew the God she served is well able. And today I want to say to her family, especially to Alexia and Abigail, <coughs> we at the Kingston Church, we are still your church family. We are there for you. We still keep you in our prayers. But know that your mother is in a better place. She's out of her pain and whatever misery with which she is with the Lord. And one day, if you live to and faithful, you will see her again. I want to do this song. It says, Until then, our hearts will go on singing. My heart can sing. When I pause to remember a heart is but a stepping stone along a train. Oh, 
you for that beautiful song this time the second scripture reading Division calls second scripture reading But I would have you not to be ignorant, brethren, consoling them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as other which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the command of the Lord shall not prevent them from rejoicing. For the Lord himself shall be sent from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall raise us. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall be ever with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with his words. Okay, and scripture reading. Amen. Yes, the scripture says the dead in Christ shall rise second. Oh, first, yeah. So what happened to the second? Second. So there will be a false resurrection, which means that the dead in Christ shall rise forth and caught up together with those who are alive to be the Lord in the air. And so shall they ever be with the Lord. Amen. To make sure you find yourself in the false resurrection. Alright? Tribute in song, I have grant brother. Oh, big brother, yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Oh, sorry, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here in your company, but so sorry it's such a sad occasion. And with all pleasure, I'm going to try my best to do my lovely sister, cousin, everything, her best and most favorite song. I know people in this community might hear because the last time we had the funeral for her sister, and that was her request that she wanted me to sing that song at her sister's funeral. So I guess that she would want a very safe home. So I'm going to do that, and at the end, I'm going to put a piece from me and the family to her. So, um, musician, I'm going to sing um, a place for people like you. If you give a little more than you take and try to fight to fix more than you break.
just wish to thank all the many doctors and nurses who care for Felicia, especially the medical team at the Kings County and Bellevue Hospitals in New York. We are satisfied with the treatment they gave to our sister. We thank Brother Gary in Canada, Camille Walker in New York, Silvon Delplash in Florida, Sister Mona in Tortola, Dudes, her sweet friend, and also Mrs. Marshall, Principal King, staff and students of the CW Prescott Primary School, Big Brother, who you just heard, Sam, Reverend Fraser and Cortis, or Cortis, 
and many, many other families and friends who stole up by her and supported all of us to this difficult time. Thank you.
Jésus. Nous avons besoin de ça, nous avons besoin de ça. 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 Alexander, a friend of mine for all of my life. In the mid 60s, when my father was principal of this fancy government school, he brought me to fancy with him, to which I became a member of this community. And one of his closest friends was a gentleman by the name of George Carey. Later, I knew him as George Lewis. My father maintained a great relationship with George until he passed. And so too, that the children of George and I, we maintain that relationship until for Felicia, until her passing. Many times I come to fancy, even when I would have left this school as a student and as a teacher, that if I come to fancy and I, I do not go to the home of George, I would have a good tongue lashing. But with that as it may, we maintain a great relationship over the years. Felicia, I saw her grow up. And there was no doubt at all, as would have been identified earlier on, that she was a live wire in this community. She was a teacher, a community activist, and someone who understood her indigenousness to this area. She knew who she was, she knew who she wanted to be, and nothing can stop her, as 
she sought to have whatever she wanted. Felicia worked with this community as a teacher, as in sports, and other areas of development. And of course, the testimony, the testimony was said by the representatives of the CW Prescott as to her role and work with that school. It was in 2013 when I came to this school for a graduation exercise. Felicia said to me, my daughter has passed to go to the girls' high school. And so I am seeking to have a chance for. She was requesting of me to assist in that regard, which I did. <coughs> and uh, she went to the CW Prescott School, where she spent all of the time. I do not want to get into conflict with what I heard earlier. What I can say boldly that Felicia called me last year and said I'm finished with Kingston <laughs> and I want to be transferred back to France. I said okay, I will try and do my best. She said, however, if it can't be done this year, certainly I want to have it next year. But one thing I want you to do for me, to try and see if you can find a seat on the transport that goes to Kingston from Fancy on the school bus. There is where she was until her passing. Felicia has been a good friend. I miss her. But I'm sure that Felicia understood of humanity. She understood that there was life after that. And so she was just mortal man. Felicia accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that here in Fancy, that this is a community that knows what is Christianity and of course, Felicia practiced Christianity even before going into Kingston. But I'm sure recognizing further for sickness, ensure that she had a safe passage beyond the real flesh and blood on the soul. Felicia has gone. She has left, have left an internal mark here, not only in this community of fancy, but wherever she has sold. I'm sure there are many testimonies to that fact. She has gone. And may also rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Three words were mentioned here. Mentioned three words. Life after death. Do you believe in life after death? Yes, you yes. say then no. But she will be. I will say she's going to be risen one of these days. She's going to rise to be those who are alive, as we have said, someone said a while ago, but the Bible said so. To meet those who are alive and remain caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So you better believe that today. There is death after life. What did I say? Okay then, but it's the other way Glad you are here and listening and paying attention. Most importantly, paying attention. 
representative from the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Joy Blake Brown. Next. interest 
as she said, to return over the river to teach. In support of her desire, I took personal interest. I would have spoken to her permanent secretary work and even the person at transport and works responsible for transporting Felicia, who agreed that there will certainly be a space on that bus for Felicia. Unfortunately, at the start of that academic year, which, which is this academic year, 2020, um, 4, 25, she took sick and was unable to fulfill this desire. I must also add that she took her health seriously and as we all know, she fought to the very end. Even during her last days, she sent text messages to the class to let them know that she will be back. However, God had other plans. If you want to touch the future, teach the child. This is certainly what Felicia had done. Since she had changed and touched the lives of many individuals, she was a committed, spirited person, a cultural enthusiast, who instilled a love of country to her students. Staff and students of the CW Prescott School, as you bid farewell to your teacher, remember what she would have instilled in you, no one can take away. Let her positive influence prevail in your work now and in the future. According to Henry Adams, a teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. At the Ministry of Education, we are proud of our contribution to our nation's children and the community of North Minwood. Teaching was her chosen profession. What nobler employment or more valuable to state than that of the man who instructs the rising generation. Marcus Tutelus Cicero, God has called her home. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you. Yes, that was Felicia. And Felicia will be back. Yes, Felicia will be back on that great day when Jesus Christ comes around for the church. Felicia will be back to meet him in the air. So if you want to see Felicia again, you have to make sure you get to know Jesus Christ first before you depart this life. So she will be back. Next, we have a brother who I know from a long, long time growing up. President of the Teachers Union. I remember him growing up when we were young men, small boys, playing cricket. From Rosebank, and they like tomorrow, we would go down to Rosebank, and they would come up to fancy and we play test match cricket, right? Test match cricket, you remember the days? Yes, man. Some good leaks, fast on him. He was a fast bowler. He was a fast bowler, so I'm going to introduce him now, rather introduce himself. Yes. Yes. Robert. Thank you. My brother. I'm saying greetings in the got it from the language. Because our sister was one of those persons who laid a solid foundation here. I want to acknowledge the honorable parliamentary representative, Brother Daniel. Honorable. The Minister of Education, Honorable Kotsky, Pastor, Deputy Chief, Education Officer, Honorable Senator John, that's right, this is Louis John. <laughs> Other Education Officers, Distinguished um, Principal of the CW Prescott Primary and other members of staff, other invited guests, other ministers of religion, the community of fancy, and the surrounding areas, children, parents, and guardians. It's always a mixed feeling to be at a, a funeral service. As being president of the same as the UN's teachers union, when a warrior passes, when a soldier leaves this side and transcends into another 
world is always touching. And so I also bring you greetings from the National Executive the staff, the entire teaching fraternity, and even from the Caribbean Union of Teachers, because whenever a loved one passes, we express to them and they would send all kind of greetings. It just means the family can't get these greetings. So I am saying that to you today. Much has been said about our sister. She started right here in this school. You would have heard that from the ministry. And the legacy that she laid here in Fancy, Fancy is like the, the mega for cultural heritage. And when she went into Kingston, she carried that with with her. So it, it, it's not any, anybody losing anything. She came here to fulfill her purpose on this earth, and she did that to her utmost best. And that is why we must celebrate. When the children give their testimonies, that's the satisfaction that teachers get. You know, we appreciate that so much that we're here, even though we are sad because that's them. We have to celebrate. We have to rejoice and be glad because God has taken her from us to a place where she will have no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. And we have to be happy that God has done that. Right in fancy, she was instrumental with the farmers group. Yes? yes. The Bam Bam and the Lukuna and the Farine and the Pudding and all those indigenous. That's why the people live so long here. <laughs> very strong. Very strong. Very committed. Very culturally pronounced. And so she was very much involved. What I noticed many times was the extracurricular, but personally I say cool. Yeah? Because those children, there are some children who come in here into the schools, they need that. Yes. What we call extra. To mold them and groom them and prepare them for career. Yes. And she has done here, she has done it here with the beauty pageants. Yes. And children are able to emerge from here into the national competition in Prispa. And what she did, a lot of time with Tacho, who is the cousin, and Ken Goins, and Kavita no, um, Novita Roberts, Kian Roberts, those were teachers here working together yes. to continue the tradition of the elders, the ancestors. Yes. And they did a marvelous job. We don't really say round of applause at a, at a funeral, right? But we could, we could do that for them because they have done a great job. And she moved on to CW. I know Mrs. K is going to have a difficult time filling that space. But you have the top ranking of the ministry here. And I'm sure they're going to find someone not ready to fit in into horseshoe because she's unique. Everybody's unique. But I guarantee you that the ministry is going to do that for you so that the children could continue their hard work, their commitment and dedication. And I want to also say to the staff and the principal of CW, find comfort in God. Yes. Hold on to Him, especially in these times of sorrow and pain. And He knows this. You know, finally, on one of our march, every year we march to commemorate the 1975 events. We're not marching against the government. Some of the young people think so. It's about the historic events of 1975. And when that sister was in the line with us, and we gave her the mic, you know what she started? I am a warrior, a Christian warrior. I have it in a right hand. Warrior. A Christian warrior, I have me weapon in a me right hand. Warrior,
wisdom. She's a family person. And she loved her children so much. So she decided to go there to make sure that the transition is smooth and they are fitting in. And remember they are young ladies. So she wants to make sure that she cover them with her wings. So I want to wish you all the best as we continue to celebrate and to appreciate the life. May her soul rest in the tournament. A teacher warrior, right? Yes. Teacher warrior. Okay, at this time we'll call on the honorable Shovel John. Yes. Thank you very much, MC. Honorable Montgomery Daniel, representative for North Wilwood. Honorable Curtis King, Minister of Education at town. Pastors, Brother Robinson, SEOs, teachers, students, family. Good evening. Afternoon, sorry. Job chapter 14 and verse 1 states, Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeteth also as a shadow and continueth not. Lev, Felicia Alexander. We know her as Lev. Was an extraordinary woman. She was not just a friend, but she was an inspiration, a mentor, and a beacon of unwavering strength. She was exceptional, courageous, and a woman whose life story was inspiring as her soul. She helped many people with her kind heart. She possessed a vibrant spirit. Whenever you see Leah, she was always smiling. She always had that word to encourage you. Even in her pain, she had that word. And it's because she was brought up on good Christian principles. Lel had the ability to connect with people on a level that transcends the ordinary. She listened with her heart. She understood with her soul. And she spoke words that had the power to heal, inspire, and uplift. She was a friend, a cousin to me, who stood by us in times of sorrow, celebrated with us in times of joy, and encouraged us when we doubted ourselves. When Lel took sick, and I, she came by us and I spoke with her, she never told us, but we knew from her demeanor that something was wrong. Despite her still having that jovial spirit. I remember when Papa Warwick died. She came to her home to have, she had lunch there. And we spoke at length. She went down back with my brother to Kingston. And yes, she testified that she wanted to be back in fancy. I visited her on New Year's Day where I met Don't and Mrs. Stay. And we had a good time there, despite her pain. She was going back down the next day to the doctor. And I said to her, but you know, you can't be traveling with this surgery because it may affect you further. But she wanted to be at home. She wanted to be among friends. 
Lel spirit lifts anyone when they are around her or they were around her. That was the kind of person she was. Lel, however, never got over the death of her sister. From the time that sister was buried, it's like something went with her. She tried, she fought, but the Lord knows best. Name her soul, praise me, peace. Thank you, Mr. John. Uh, next we have our cousin, Mr. Bevan Lewis. Mr. Bevan Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, loved ones. When my, Portia, when my cousin Portia asked me to say a few words at the celebration of the life of our sister, Lel, on her behalf, briefly she said, because she knew I tend to ramble on, and we already had a politician cousin on the program, <laughs> I immediately reflected on the times Lel and I had occasion to visit with each other. And sadly, I realized that in recent times, it seemed to always be under circumstances of Ill illness and, re and bereavement. However, I can say that regardless of the solemnness of the occasion, our conversation was always, was always positive and uplifting, filled with laughter, fun memories, and hope for the future. I remember our most recent visit last August, just after her sister Lynn's passing. We, rem we, rem we reminisced about her life growing up in fancy, and she talked excitedly about her plans for this school year. She would be back in fancy. She would have time to look at her traps. She would become again more involved in community activities, and she talked about completing the upstairs where friends from town could come and visit for a weekend. I told her I look forward to be one of those friends from town. <laughs> so you could understand that it was with, I was shaken when I, with, you could understand how shaken I was by the sudden and rapid deterioration of her health over the last couple of months. However, I remain inspired by the strength she always displayed during these challenging circumstances under which we have occasion to meet. It testament to her character, resilient, hopeful, and always seeking the light. As we gather here to reflect on the beauty of the life of Felicia Alexander and to express gratitude that she has found peace at the end of the day, please allow me to share this poem that I hope will provide some comfort to all who, would, all who mourn. The Final Flight by Arthur Unknown. Don't grieve for me for I am free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand, and when I, I took his hand when I heard his call, I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to walk, to play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the end of the day. If my parting has left the void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah yes, these things too I will miss. Be not born with the times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lend it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wanted me now. He set me free. Rest in peace, Lel. You have left an indelible, indelible mark on all our lives. And your spirit will continue to inspire us all for all our days. Thank you. Next we have um, 
Maxwell Tajo Francis. Yes, the LL. I guess I could remember was one of the founder of the Unity Farmers Group, and she was one of the driving force behind the same man, Maxwell Tajo Francis, along with Juan Grafton. We had Arasto, and we had um, Ivo. Yes, Mr. Ivo, Harry. The only ones who really started this farmers group and Lel and Taju, especially Lel. She was probably the only girl, the only woman. Yes, the only woman from the beginning of this group. So she was really a cultural person. Right here in fancy. So at this time I'm going to ask Mr. Francis Taju to do his name. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I don't know if there's anything much I can say that has, hasn't already been said, but I'm gonna um, relate a few things that I've written down here. Felicia and I, very close relative. We knew each other from childhood, even if I was a little older than her. Our bond grew stronger when she joined the staff at the fancy government school, where I was already teaching. We became closer and saw the school through many cultural and school-related activities. Felicia and I joined the Fancy Unity Farmers Cooperative at the inception and were responsible for coordinating all activities, including our National Heroes Day Festival, which we just celebrated just two weeks ago. Even this year's presentation, sorry, even this year's preparation, while she was overseas, when I called her, the first thing she wanted to hear was how things were coming together for this year. Here was the activity. Lel, as we affectionately call her, was a strong community spirited individual. A culture woman at heart, a poet. She loved writing choral speeches and enjoyed walking with children. She had a great love for pageantry. A fancy woman at heart, a country woman at heart. Our contribution to the organization was tremendous. She will surely be missed by all. To her immediate family, we wish them all the best in their future endeavors, and may they continue to keep our memory alive. May her soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Okay, before we go, thank you, Mr. Francis. So before we go into the congregational part, um, we have with us the Minister, the Honorable Minister of Education, I'm not sure if you want to say words, on behalf of the level. After this, we'll... Yes, thank you very much. Um, Minister Daniel, John, Education Officials, President of Teachers Union, Principal King and staff of CWP, the students, other principals, Dada, family members, friends, everyone, good afternoon. There's very little I can see, given what was said before. And therefore, I'm not going to keep you long. But as Minister of Education, I think it is important that. I say to the family that your daughter, your sister, your niece, your auntie, whatever she was to you, was a wonderful soul who made an outstanding contribution in the field of education. Yeah. 
and she impacted the lives of men in many respects. I'm really hoping that other teachers can follow in her own footsteps. These are always difficult times because we are supposed to get accustomed to death. It is not easy. Doesn't matter how strong you are, how strong your faith is in the Almighty God. The truth is, the immediate loss is always having an impact on you. But extended family members, close family members, friends, I want to say to you this afternoon that you can take comfort in the knowledge that although Felicia's life was relatively short, the fact is, she impacted so many lives in a positive way that you could feel proud. <laughs> and like the pastor would say, I will end by telling you that yes, those of us who believe, believe that we will see her again. But you would only be able to do so if you put your own house in order. Thank you for me. May our soul rest in the power of this. King, this time, uh, I'm going to call on Brother, brother Lavier from Oya to Budi. Lead us in the congregational hymns and then we will go to the eulogy. So on. Michael. Let us stretch our feet a little and we'll understand. We'll sing. It's not on this book, but we'll sing a verse and two of I fly away. Oh, good. Sunlight morning. Okay, you feel like standing 
Alexander, whom we loved and held dearest to our hearts, was not ours at all. Heavenly Father, in his loving kindness, loaned her to us to brighten our lives for a man, 47 years, one month, 
and 17 days. Felicia was the delight of George and Jean Joseph Alexander. And on the 18th of January, 1977, their lives were blessed with this, their seventh child. She was privileged to share and enjoy the company of six other siblings. When when Michael, Terry, Judith, Portia, and Metalin. As a baby, Metalin adored Felicia and enjoyed looking out for her. Lynn, as she was affectionately called, would often notify their mom when the baby was crying. Being tender herself in age, all pronunciations of words were not yet clear. So she would often say, Ma, the little Lel about. <laughs> Henceforth, the nickname Lel became popular and stuck on Felicia. Felicia was raised in a Christ-like household and she received Christian nurturing from her parents. The humility and profound principles of God the living were instilled in all of the Alexander's children. The family fellowshiped at the Fancy Baptist Church where her father was a senior leader and she obtained additional support in serving Almighty God. Felicia began her educational journey at this the fancy government school. There, on her, she developed her passion for reading, and at a very early age, she was keen to acquire the skill of imparting knowledge. As she grew, it became quite evident that she had an excellent taste in style and fashion. Mr. Alexander, the dad recognized her style or sense of style instilling all his children the value of honesty, hard work, independence of mind, and the power to make a positive contribution, while at the same time they must never forget to give back. When Felicia became successful at the common entrance examination, she attended the Bishop's College, Kingston and completed her secondary level education there. Sister Felicia, with her desire to earn an income and gain her independence, obtained the position of receptionist at the Beach Homers Hotel in Villa. This humble young lady performed her duties gracefully for a brief period, but realized that she had to sacrifice the position to return home in fancy to care for their ailing mom. Miss Alexander was always an ambitious and talented young lady. Therefore, she channeled her energy towards her future development to enhance her ability to be an asset to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. With this in mind, she was enrolled in the YES program and utilized this opportunity to further her career in the educational environment in St. Vincent, as she was also a product of a line of educational professionals. Felicia capitalized on her youth and gained her teaching certificate from the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers College. She received further training in counseling from the University of the West Indies Open Campus. This training equipped her to function effectively and efficiently at the fancy government, Sandy Bay government, and Georgetown government schools, where she was assigned. At fancy government school, she also served as a teacher's guide for the school's cooperative. Felicia was a beacon of light, radiating warmth and kindness but she never shunned her community nor her humble beginnings. As a result of this mindset, teacher Alexander became one of the founding members of the Fancy Unity Farmers Co-op and particularly functioned 
in the fancy national heroes committee. She was very instrumental in organizing, coordinating, directing, mobilizing, and actively leading the way in the ever popular yearly activity in this community. Life was transforming into adulthood for teacher Alexander, and she accepted the privilege of parenting two daughters, Alexia and Abigail. We can attest that her children received her overwhelming love and care. She was dedicated to their well-being and single-handedly nurtured, provided for, and raised her girls. Single parenting was often quite challenging, but Lel was never daunted by this circumstance. She often made many sacrifices to ensure that her daughters received the best in their lives, although she experienced some heartbreaks and disappointments. When Alexia became successful at the CPEA exams to attend the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Girls High School in Kingston, Mommy Lel relocated to Kingston and requested a transfer as a teacher, thereby becoming a member of staff at the CW Prescott Primary School. Teacher Alexander made her sterling con contribution to that institution and served until she took ill. Amidst the many changing seasons in her life, Felicia remained steadfast in Christ. The Wesleyan Holiness Assembly became her new church home, where she was fed spiritually. She served as a church secretary and worship leader, as she was passionate about Almighty God and his work here on earth. Sister Alexander was a life wire during worship services and hardly ever missed prayer and Bible sessions. She possessed an infectious laughter and her unwavering compassion made everyone feel accepted and valued. When our sister took ill late last year, siblings Terry, Judith and Portia went into overdrive they were committed to do all that they can for their younger sister, having not yet recovered from the loss of methylene a mere six months ago. Felicia was afforded the privilege to have further medical attention in the USC, and they ensured that they spent quality time with her. I am pleased to share the sentiments of those who cared, loved, and supported Felicia. Portia, Judith, and Terry took time from their busy schedules to shower her with the same measure of warmth that she sowed into the lives of many when she was strong and ultimately became a source of strength when she became weak. Her siblings who are now reaping the blessings from Daddy George and Mom Jean provided the financial stability Felicia needed to alleviate all the burdens associated with severe illness in order for her to spend her latter days in peace. As her condition deteriorated, it was her constant prayers and devotion to Almighty God that stabilized her in her lowest times. She relied on daily devotions with her sisters and other friends, regular prayer meetings with Brother Gary in Canada, inspirational words from Sister Mona and brothers and sisters in the household of faith. This spiritual upliftment prepared her for the small transition from this birth she received on Thursday, 7th March, 2024. Today, as we celebrate her and bid her farewell, we say thank you, Heavenly Father, for the life and the time we spent with a faithful soldier in the army of the Lord. An asset to the educational institutions in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. An excellent contributor to the community of fancy. A loving, caring, and always appreciative 
little sister. This sacrificial mom, a thankful friend to her caregiver does. An understanding, respectful patient to the medical fraternity. All dares loved one, Felicia Patricia Lel Alexander. Her work on earth is ended. Her time has passed. She has now been transferred to her eternal home, where she will sit at the welcome table and feast on milk and honey. Until then, our hearts will keep on singing. Until then, with joy, we'll carry on. Until our eyes behold that city, until that day God calls us home. Sleep, lovely, sleep. Thank you. Okay, thank you for those wonderful words. I'm sorry, my dear sister. Please. Your song before we have Reverend Fraser. All the way my Savior leads me. You show me how to stand again. to leave now. Be grateful for your presence here. So take your leave. All the way my Savior leads me.
and may you bless it to our hearts, we pray. In the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, and if I need to, the congregation, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die or she may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He said. What a bold statement for someone to make. It's a good thing it wasn't just anyone. But it was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. My friends, in this portion of scripture, we see Jesus facing on with Martha, the sister of Lazarus. He has been told of Lazarus' death. His friend Lazarus, whom he visited and stayed at home, at their home with, whom he probably shared a meal with was no longer in the flesh. And the Bible tells us that when he eventually went to the burial site, he saw Mary weeping. And the Jews who had come along with her also weeping. We are then told that he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And as they were taken into the tomb, the word of God tells us Jesus wept. I have an aunt who always say Jesus wept and Mary groaned. But on a more serious note, it is a gentle reminder to us that Jesus cares. Hello. It's a reminder to us that Jesus cares. He cared for his friends Martha and Mary in their time of grief. And he cared for his friends grieving right here in this service today as well. He cares for the daughters of Sister Felicia. He cares for the sisters of their sister. He cares for us as we grieve here today. A mountain Mary had questions. What if? Suppose. And we could go on and on. And maybe there are those of us who have these questions lingering as well. What if? And suppose I had done this. And what if this had happened? And I believe it was quite reasonable for her to, to, to question the master. To feel sad. To wonder if something different could have been done. And why do I say that? Because as it relates to death, there are some things that are related to the death of a loved one. That we would never be able to come to grip with. And one of them is actually losing that person. Isn't it quite similar to us when we lose the loved ones, the questions and the feelings that we, we have. The truth is we can never acclimatize to, to losing. Not even to the extent of losing a loved one, just the fact of losing. Not even the gambler is comfortable with losing. It's not with us to lose and so when we think of losing it brings a feeling upon us. We will never like losing. And for many of us, we think that death is losing. That's how we picture death. As losing. The person is no longer here. Or no longer there. Mommy is no longer with us. Sister is no longer with us. But hear what Paul says. My dear friends, today. He says for me, to live is Christ. And to die 
is gain. In other words, whatever happens to me as a child of God, it is a positive outcome. So whether I'm alive in the flesh or I've gone to be with my master, it is a positive outcome. So it may, it may feel as if you're, you're losing, but our dear sister has now grabbed a hold. Hallelujah. Of that which transcends the physical and now is experienced in the life thereafter. When we think of that, we think of that as confinement. My God. And for many of us, when we, when we look at the coffin, we, we think of being in a box. The confinement alone can give us thrills. It doesn't appear to get more confined than that, at least so we think. Isn't it? And so as Martha and Mary thought of their brother being confined to a hole in the rock in those days. And I realize that many times when you go to funerals, you know when, when the emotions come, it's actually when, when the grave begins to be covered and, and the, the, the reality of the confinement comes, steps in. They thought of their brother being confined to a hole in the rock. It must have compounded their emotions. The grave appears to be a prison, a place of confinement. But because of what transpired on the first Easter, in case you forgot, we are in the Easter season. My God, if there was a good time to have a funeral, it's in the Easter time. If there was ever a good time. Because of what transpired on the very first Easter, the children of God, they can ask like Paul, where or oh, death is your victory? I thought you had victory. Where or oh, death is your sting? And then he concludes, the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. What? But, hallelujah. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our sister Felicia has experienced the victory through Jesus Christ and that cannot be feet all. Hello. The word tells us what can separate us from the love of God, not even death. So she is victorious. She has, she has navigated her course. She has just ran her race. And now awaits her the crown of glory. Why? Because she is victorious. Hallelujah. And so the grave, therefore, is not a dead end road. Hallelujah. I think somebody should have said, Praise the Lord there. Yeah. I, I thank God that death is not a dead end road. But rather it is a, a highway into a new life. Oh, praise God. When you think of this, that, that death is, is not the end that there is. But it, it channels us. It allows us to transition into that new life. It is not a prison, but it is a passageway. And so we, we face it with all the different emotions that may be there. But in reality, at the end of it all, we realize that we have been given victory over everything that may happen to this body. You know, when you think of that, we also think of that as a finality. That that's the end. Death and the grave. It also represents a sense of finality. And we don't like finality. As human beings, we don't like that. We dread the end. And we don't welcome the mysterious. Because for some of us, it's, it's a mystery what happens after. But if you're a child of God, you will know what the word says about what happens afterwards.
In some ways, it is a fact we don't, or we won't be able to do the things or say the things that we did with the daily departed anymore. The conversations in the bedroom and on the phone and the, you know, whatever, the family dinners and, and all of that that took place. You will not be able to do them anymore. But again, because of the cross, because of the risen Messiah, the grave becomes not the end, but the beginning of a new life where temptation is replaced by triumph. Come on, somebody. Where the faith is replaced by the fulfillment that comes through getting away from this life where hope is no longer hope but it comes a realization what I hope for I now realize there's no need for faith anymore because my faith has been fulfilled and where the veil that was there has now become a reality the thing that I, I saw as through a glass, as the word of God says, has now become clear because now I stand face to face with my maker, my master. And all will be clear. In the end of the story with Lazarus, we know Lazarus was raised from the dead. But that resurrection would have only been for a while. Because our physical bodies could only take so much. I, I, I tell persons, as much as we will live until we die, but there comes a time when our bodies will say no more. And so even as Lazarus was, was raised from the dead again, then there will come a time again, or there came a time again when they had to go through that process again. The physical body is for why? What is promise? The promise of Jesus when he says, whoever lives, come on somebody, I wish I had a witness here today, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. You have to be a child of God to understand this. It may seem foolishness to you, but until you get to know Jesus, until you understand the promises of God, and then you can you receive this in your heart where he says, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Because the flesh isn't all that there is. It's part of us. And it's the, more, the most frail part of us. The right to say is to be absent from the, the body is to be present with the Lord. On Easter morning, when the female disciples went to the tomb and it was empty, it was the proof. Come on. It was the proof that what he had promised to us is true. So Jesus did not lose. He wasn't confined to the tomb. Neither was it the finality, but rather a beginning, my friends. And because Jesus demonstrated this, we can now grab a hold of it. The scripture teaches, if we have been joined with him in the likeness of his death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. If we have been joined with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in him in the likeness of his resurrection. There will come a time. It has been said a number of times in this service today when the dead in Christ shall arise, not with corruptible bodies. Not with bodies that are susceptible to disease and, and susceptible to, to ache and all of that. But with a glorified body that is incorruptible. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Amen. But you have to go through the process. It's not an easy process, but you have to go through the process. Hallelujah. 
Not only is Jesus life, but he also conveys life to the believers so that, hear me as I close, death will never triumph. He told Nicodemus this. Everyone who believes in me shall have eternal life. Do you believe today? Ask the family members to stand at this time. Just in case they didn't know I'm finished. <laughs> I'm going to ask Reverend Allen to come. And Reverend Allen will lead in a prayer for the family members at this time. And even as he leads in this prayer, I ask him to pray as well for those whose heart may have been touched and haven't known the resurrected saviors yet as their Lord and their King. We do not ask you to go come around the casket as family members. All the family members, please. Let me say good afternoon to everyone on the song. When I heard of Felicia's death, I said, fancy seems far from me. But I'm glad I came. And it took two young lads to stand on this platform to cement something in me that I couldn't understand. Many years when I asked my wife, who being a teacher also, would you ever leave teaching and go to another job? Resoundingly, she said, No way. So I understood then what it meant when she's leaving home and taking all these goodies to school. When she's walking in Kingston Water Bus and some tall, strapping guys, gorgeous young lady would pass and say, Miss. Come here to understand what's all about when you commit yourself as a teacher. Because at the time when I asked her that, being you know working at ECGC for all these years, I saw an opening where she could have gotten a job, and she said to me, "You're seeing money, but I'm seeing children." God bless all the teachers. That was a good place for you to say, my teacher. God bless all the teachers. And we are going to pray at this time. Let's bow our heads in reverence to God. Eternal God and our righteous Father, we stand in this school or sit in this school this plot of land that is designated for the purpose it is used for. We thank you for the lives of all the persons who would have passed through this institution. God, as we stand here, we recognize that you are a great, big, wonderful God. We place our trust in you, Lord. Oh God, our help in ages past. Our hope for years to come. God, our lives are like an open book that you can read and you know most everything about us. But at this particular time, Lord, we want to just lift up the grieving family. Especially the daughters, the 
since the release. God, I pray that the spirit of Felicia would pass on to her daughters. Even the one that is in Taiwan. And also the one who is among us today. I pray, God, for wisdom. For the family, the extended family, the entire family. The God, as they open their mouth, they would speak with wisdom. That would bring comfort. That would bring peace. That would give strength and support. I pray for understanding. As a wise man, Solomon prayed. God, that there would be a great coming together. We thank you because the false institution that you have set up in creation was the family and your concern about families, Lord. I pray for them today in a special way. That they would understand each other and give support to one another. Father God, visit them. Support them. Provide for them. Physically and spiritually. And now, Father, we ask that you would pour out the Abrahamic blessing upon their lives. Bless them going out and bless them coming in. Bless them sitting down and even lying down and rising up. Bless them, oh God, whatever they put their hands or their minds to. Bless them today and come. Surround them with your love. Even now, Lord, we pray for all the persons who are among us who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. God, I pray that the word that was spoken today would resonate in their heart, would be deposited in their spirit, and will bring forth fruits of righteousness. Save their precious souls. And even now, Lord, Surround us all with your love. And pour your blessing upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. For those who are standing, remain standing. Uh, so sit and let us all stand. Final hymn. When we all get to heaven, sing the wondrous love.
She's home! Yeah! You have two and a half! Yeah, man! You have two and a half! Yeah, man! She's home! Yes, sir! Yes, yes, yes! 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 Yes, yes,
va, Blanco. Blanco. Just singing a song, but we'll all endeavor to meet on that beautiful show. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in His wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister Felisa Alexander, we therefore commit her body to the ground. 
Art to art, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last week. That love, that love. And the life of the world to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. A two second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world. The earth and sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed. Hallelujah. And made like unto his own glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Amen. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. <laughs> Send it up, people. Send it up. <laughs> I don't know if it is
Before we place the wreath on the final resting place, which signifies the beautiful soul that she was, and also signifies that which she shall receive from her maker, of master, Jesus Christ the Lord, please hear the word of God. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, O Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory. Show me them. 